Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be checking out the newly released macOS 13 Ventura developer beta. It's WWDC day and I got this downloaded and we're going to check it out on my late 2021 M1 Max MacBook Pro that I've been using as my main laptop ever since I purchased this in December of last year. Of course, because of that, we're not going to be overriding my existing macOS Monterey installation. We're going to install Ventura on a separate volume that I'm going to create here momentarily. Now, just a heads up for those of you who may have never heard of my channel before and just came across this and you recommended, this is in no way going to be an in-depth feature exploration video. I do have a handful of features written down here that I thought would be cool to kind of take a little bit of a closer look at, but this is mainly going to be a classic laid back MJD installation video where we try to get this installed, see what problems, if any, we run into, which is very common for this channel, as regular viewers of mine know very, very well by now. But hopefully we won't have any problems because, I mean, well, this is beta software, so we very well may run into some issues. We will see. But first, I'm going to open up the disk utility here because we need to create a new volume on our Macintosh HD. Well, we can make a new partition or a new volume. We're gonna go with new volume because this will allow us to uh, utilize free space for both of these partitions as they need it. Whereas making a new partition, you have to literally section off uh, a portion of your drive. It's kind of one of the neat things about these later Mac OS versions that support it and the Apple file system, of course. So with our new volume created, we're going to go back to software update here we're going to click on upgrade now and it's going to begin downloading Mac OS 13 beta and we're almost halfway there 11 minutes remaining this has definitely been going at a pretty decent pace so far it's uh, it started about 20 minutes it's already down to 11 minutes and it has not been nine minutes so that's pretty great. I mean, I imagine that Apple's update servers are pretty overloaded at the moment with this being the day that this update dropped, but hey, definitely off to a great start. Looks like we've got that same minimalist installer here with just the generic macOS logo. So we'll click on continue. Very typical for macOS beta software. We're going to agree to the license agreement and show all disks here because we want to install it on Ventura and not Macintosh HD because I certainly do not want to overwrite my existing stuff. Uh, so we'll click on continue. We're going to uh, select my only user account as the owner of the new volume. We'll install and we'll type in our password here. And there we go. Mac OS 13 beta will be installed on the disk Ventura. So we've got about an hour remaining. Okay, 57 minutes. Well, not exactly an hour, but close enough, right? So, I'll be back, because I'm not going to make you wait an hour here, because that's boring, because you'll probably just hear me talking like this about random stuff for way too long. So we're going to just use the magic of video editing and skip to, well, it's not been an hour, it's not even been 30 minutes, it's been more like 15 minutes, and you can see we've only got two minutes remaining, so... Yeah, I always love it when timers over exaggerate like that because then when it finishes up, it's like it just feels like it just went so much faster. So I thought I was going to actually be here for an hour. And now we got to restart our Mac. All right, let's do it. We're almost there. Come on, you can do it. This is like the most anxious I've been for like a Mac OS startup in a really long time. I can't even remember the last time. Oh, Okay, I think that's it. It's got that like tiny little like knit to go. And now we're back to just the logo and we got the progress bar again, though it's going considerably faster this time. The one thing I miss about Mac OS setups is that intro video. Those are always so cool. Do you guys remember those? I was really disappointed when they got rid of those. I mean, yeah, it did kind of take up some time, you know, during the beginning of the installation, but it just kind of got you excited to like boot into Mac OS and check out this operating system. So accessibility, we're going to say not now. And we're going to select our Wi Fi network. Let me find it here. So we got our data and privacy thing, we'll hit continue. We're not going to migrate, we'll set up later because I don't want to deal with the Apple ID sign in right now. We'll agree to our license terms, yes. We're gonna go with dark mode because, you know, why not? Of course we want dark mode. And there we go. Welcome to macOS Ventura. And I guess this is the wallpaper here. And yeah, let's go to system preferences or, oh, nope, it's system settings now. Yeah, that was something Apple did not touch on 
in the keynote. Of course, it's a very minor thing, which honestly I think sounds a little bit better. System preferences sounded a bit too formal. It just, you know, of course, stuck if you were a Mac user. You know, you were used to that since the beginning of Mac OS X. And also, it gets completely redesigned as well. It looks more like iOS here with this uh, bar on the side. You know, you've got your different... Uh, categories. So yeah, definitely giving me an iOS uh, vibe here. So I'll swap this back to the light mode here. So this is what the light wallpaper here, or the light mode version of the default wallpaper look like. Although let's see what other wallpapers we got. So Mac OS graphic, that's all this says. So it's interesting that it was not the default wallpaper because Apple did have this set as the wallpaper during the keynote. I think one of the things I'd like to do is go through and take a look at some of the minor things that were changed that Apple didn't really touch on in the keynote. Because, of course, you've got the major features that Apple loves to talk about, like Stage Manager, but they don't mention the newly renamed System Preferences to System Settings. I don't think they touched on the About menu as well. When you open this up, it looks, you know, it's a lot skinnier now, and you don't have that tabbed interface up here anymore. So we gotta click on More Info here, and that just opens up. Oh, that's neat. So under general, yeah, this is definitely giving me like an iOS vibe here because you got to go to general about and then you get your processor information, memory information, serial number, all of that. But speaking of the really big changes, let's take a little look at stage manager here. So we've got a couple windows opened up. We'll go up to control center and turn on stage manager and it brings our top window, which in this case is system settings. It's going to I have to get used to saying that instead of system preferences onto the desktop here and it brings the other windows over here on the side so we can click on apple tv for instance it swaps it swaps it with uh contacts there we can swap it with maps so yeah i can just like do this all day long i mean maybe not that would get pretty boring but yeah this is a nice multitasking feature for sure i just love having i mean it's kind of like a separate dock over here on the left side of the screen with your opened window so you don't have to like minimize them and then oh that's neat Hang on a second, so when you minimize something, it goes to Stage Manager. Ah, I did not know that. Yeah, if they mentioned that during the keynote, I just missed it because I had the keynote on in the background. I was doing other stuff. I was on a phone call at one point, so it wasn't like, it didn't have my full attention, so I definitely missed a few things. And that's what makes these videos really fun to me because I'm just kind of exploring this and experiencing it for the first time, and hey, maybe you guys are as well, and you're coming along for the ride, and that's just really awesome. So when you open up another program, it brings uh, your, the program you had opened into Stage Manager, so that's nice. So it's really just keeping one active window open on screen at all times. So now that I've got App Store open, if I open up like Messages, for instance, it moves... Oh no, it doesn't. Okay, so it doesn't do that for Messages, I guess. Although maybe that's because it brought up this window here. Although, th I mean, this is still Messages, right? It's just not, you know, it's like the, the, the setup window. So maybe let's try, uh, let's open up Calendar here. Okay, so Calendar will bring App Store to Stage Manager. We open up Reminders, and it'll do the same thing. And see, this is the welcome message for Reminders. So maybe this is a bug, though. I don't think it's really supposed to behave like this. I would think even if it's not the main application window, it's still a window from the Messages application. So I feel like it should push uh, this here reminders into oh you see it pushed messages there making this the active window will push messages into stage manager but not having messages open as the active window that won't push app store into stage manager or whatever other application is open oh check that out it actually looked like it was going to that's interesting let me try that again let's swap to maps here and then messages okay didn't do it that time let's maybe go to yeah what happens if we do calendar here okay it brings both of them in the stage manager yeah you see right there it looked like it tried to bring calendar into stage manager but it didn't but it's interesting to see that and just this is experiencing this live man i mean i have not done anything with this off camera at all so this is just a, a blind run through to me and uh oh look at that tv quit unexpectedly <laughs> okay yeah so we can turn off stage manager by going up here and clicking on the stage manager button once again and we will uh, turn it off. There we go. Oh, what's the hide recent apps thing? Oh, okay, that'll just, oh, it just makes it so it's, oh, I didn't even know that. So you can make it essentially auto hide like the dock. That's even better. You know what, I think I, I like that a lot better than having it on screen at one time. 
So let's just uh, turn it off here and get all of our windows back. So there you go. And one thing I would like to try out that I don't think you can try out at the moment is continuity camera. Oh, let me get out of, <laughs> let me get out of App Store here. Continuity camera, which is the ability to, can I just quit out of this please? Thank you. Continuity camera which is the ability to use your iPhone's camera as a webcam on your MacBook or your iMac or whatever you might be running, which is useful for older MacBooks that don't have you know, the greatest webcam. I don't think you can use it right now though, because first of all, my iPhone is not running the developer beta. Oh, here you go. Use continuity camera on your Mac. Okay, what do we gotta do? Have to have Bluetooth turned on. Wait a second, Mojave? I thought the continuity camera name was introduced today, but judging from this page, you can do the thing where you can like right click in a pages document and say like, take a photo on the iPhone's camera. That you could have done previously. Yeah, I mean, there you have it, guys. That is a little look here at macOS Ventura. Definitely, I mean, hey, I'll be honest, I'm kind of excited for it. I'm definitely more excited for the new iOS version because I'm, I'm really looking forward to some of the features that were introduced in that. Though I don't think I'm gonna install it on my iPhone 11 here, which is my main phone. And unfortunately, I cannot install it on my 6S because you need to have an iPhone 8 to run the latest version of iOS, at least this you know developer beta that was just uh, released today, which is unfortunate, but I don't know. Maybe I will sacrifice my iPhone 11 very briefly for a future video. If you guys want to see that, you know, if enough people suggest it, maybe I'll do it just for the heck of it. I won't make any promises, though, because I do like my phone to not have any bugs and to work. There you have it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed down below, notifications, all of that. And yeah, I guess I can show you the new wall in the background. This is something you may be seeing in future videos uh, as I continue to move into my new place. Yeah, I'm pretty much moved into my new place, though I am still going through the process of unpacking stuff, getting things set up where I want them, and nothing's really finalized yet, at least in this room. This is my dedicated recording room, which is just really awesome. Uh, so I might move this table around. I might, uh, you know, set up some things in the background, kind of make it look a little bit different. Uh, so just bear with me, guys. Uploads may be a little sporadic for a little while here as I continue to do that. But uh, my goal is to get back on a regular upload schedule ASAP. So thank you to everybody for sticking with me. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.